Hi. Your great grandma has gone shopping. <sighs> What's up, Jesse? Guess what? Come quat. Huh? And never mind what. I got my pictures today. Want to see them? Your school pictures? I sure do. Oh, these sure do bring back a lot of memories. and 90. Thank you very much, Miss Joan. Laura, you just look absolutely beautiful today. Can you tell me what the occasion may be? I gave my school pictures taken. Now remember, smile for the picture man. She's a beauty, ain't she? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Sweet pea. Listen to me, Eldy. The 7th Street plan is working overtime. Reno's going gangbusters. We just hit two million in sales. We've got more than 100 guys in the field, but the reorder department is on top of each other down there. Marion's office is in the cold bin, for God's sake. I know, I know. Hand tinting is going on in ladies' homes. We've got to think about more space. The funding? Where are we going to get that? Subac just got us in with Northwestern National Bank. Oh, yeah, no thanks to your golf and card games. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, Fill her up. Oh, never thought you'd ask. Fill her up and top it off. That's my motto. Nice car. You could have one just like it. Oh yeah, how's that? We're looking for photographers. And a car comes with the territory. Gosh. Well, a fellow's got to be able to get around. Of course, you leave the company, we get the car back. <laughs> I've never even held a camera before. No problem. Bruce, grab the camera. Now, the camera's already loaded with film, so all we have to do is get the tripod out, set it right over here on the ground, and the camera, oh, oh sorry about that, me. Bruce. Camera sits down flat on the tripod. Now, we have to be exactly 42 inches away. That's why we have this handy dandy string right here. And we got a nice sunny day, so we'll set the f-stop at 11 and the shutter speed at 125th of a second. Excellent. That'd be just right. All right, now we have the cable release right there. You come over here, when you push that button, you're gonna be taking a picture. Bruce, let me get him on the good side here and let the kid take our picture. Just push this button, huh? All right. Smile. And that's how I got out of the gas station business and into the picture man business. This picture's kind of color, kind of black and white. Believe it or not, we used to paint black and white pictures by hand so that they would look like colored pictures. Weird. Yes, but the cameras were even more weird. <clears throat> ah, we used to haul these things around from school to school. Really weird. Where do you put the film? A one lens mahogany box camera is used by photographers for more than 20 years, beginning shortly after the company is founded. Uh, we came to Minneapolis, opened rented a little room over lunch lunchroom on 321 Hennepin, and uh, we were in business. Of course, we had limited uh, resources. We had about $250 a piece, but that managed to see us through. 
And with our, uh, we had a small product, uh, three pictures for 20 cents, six for 35, and 12 for 50 cents, and one for the teacher. The founders debate between calling the company R&R Studios or Rothgeb and Reinecker. They settle on National School Studios, school photography of distinction. The rent is $35 a month for a 1,000 square foot office. Way, way back uh, in 1937 when I was a simple bank clerk at the First National downtown. But I was asked to go to a little company <clears throat> called National School Studio. So I, uh, I called at their office the next day, pad and pencil in hand, and I come and I meet the two of the biggest guys I've ever known in this little dingy office above a Baltimore dairy lunch. The so-called national operation is decidedly local and runs on a shoestring and a prayer. When I asked them to see their books, <laughs> they said, well, there's one of the books right there, a dog-eared passbook that the banks used to issue right in their deposits. On the other side, this 300-page generic checkbook. There are books. Steve Subek whips the books into shape, and by 1938, the company has $65,000 in sales. Most of the time, the two owners are on the road. Mr. Picture Man, do you take other kids' pictures at other schools? I sure do. As of last week, I've got 47 other schools, to be exact. 47? Holy cow! Every photographer is also a salesperson working on spec. If mom and dad like the pictures, they can buy them, and the school gets a 10% commission. If the parents don't buy the photos, then the processed photos are a waste of film, chemicals, paper, and effort. It's a risky proposition. It was quite an accident that uh, Mr. Rothgib handled the sales, and I handled the plants and production. This went along until World War II, and uh, I uh, joined the Navy and uh, went in the Navy, became a photographic officer, and uh, Mr. Rothgib kept the business going while I was gone. LD was a very resourceful man. He found men, he found cars, he got supplies, he got gas, and the fellows who weren't in the Army took the pictures, and they grew. And he saved whatever he drew, he saved an equal amount for Bruce. They went into sepia tone, and that was just a five by seven. And those, were, most of those were tinted. I guess that was an option. You could have them tinted. They put rosy cheeks on them and lips on them, and, and uh, I think everybody had blue eyes at that time. They had good relations at the bank until until 1947. Somehow, the chairman of the board at the bank uh, saw L.D. at one of the clubs. L.D. liked to play bridge, liked to play golf, and for stakes which are not too small. So they canceled the line of credit at the bank. So you joined the company the same day you met them? In 1949, I sure did. But what if they were con men or gangsters or something? Some people thought they were. In life, Jesse, sometimes you have to act on your hunches. And on this occasion, my hunches and my gut feel were that I should go with Bruce and Elde. The company had heart. It was, it was like a family. Still is. But they had to convince me. Gee, I don't know. The way I see it, two dollars. Folks are always gonna need gas. Sure, that's true. But you can bet on the fact that parents are always gonna love their kids. And families, they're always gonna love each other. Pictures, they'll always tell that story. And this way you can call your own shots, work as hard as you want, travel, see the country. Oh yeah, and the money's not bad either. <laughs> Think about a kid. Could be the opportunity of a lifetime. Hello, can we get a little help over here? I think we're lost. 
I'll think about it. All right. Hey, they were great salesmen. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit that they sold me on the company that day. Sold me on the magic of being a picture man. I never regretted a minute of it. It was hard work, though. I would rent a place in a town, draw a circle on the map around the town, and hit as many schools as I could in one or two days. It'd take 10 to 12 schools to get 150 to 200 children per day. I stuck to the paved roads so I could make better time. Often, there'd be one-room schools. I'd take the pictures and be back on the road within 30 minutes. I wouldn't even close the trunk. See, are you ready to have your picture taken? Yeah. Oh, you look Taking adorable. pictures is more than clicking a shutter. I have to try to capture the personality of the other person, connect with them. For one brief moment, I make time stand still and create a photographic memory that lasts a lifetime. At that time, Rothgeb was more or less, he was the sales force, he ran the sales force. And Reinecker, he ran the plant part of it. And we very seldom, we weren't allowed at that time to have any association with the sales force. And they, were, they could not come back into the plant. It was a lot, mostly, mostly women uh, of all ages, uh, all the way from teenagers on up uh, to, to, you know, retired ladies. A lot of women did start at National School Studios knowing that they could have a job in the fall until Christmas and earn extra money for Christmas presents, carpeting, drapes. We worked on Thanksgiving. I mean, everybody came to work on Thanksgiving. We worked half a day, we'd start real early in the morning and maybe go home about noon. And our husbands would make Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and everybody, everybody was there. They all carried their load. There was some partying going on, both at the, uh, you know, both at the plant level and the, and the, and the sales level. And there was half a dozen of the men in the back room. They had, well, what you thought was pitchers of water, but they were pitchers of martinis is what they were. By the early 50s, National School Studios is living up to its name and has photographers working in 48 states. NSS prints yearbooks and opens a plant in Winnipeg, Canada. Three years after Kodak introduces it, NSS adopts color film for school photography. That same year, the Reno plant opens and NSS territory manager Cliff Erickson recruits his younger brother, Richard P. Erickson. I said, well, when do I go to work? He said, well, tomorrow. And I said, well, I don't, I don't know anything about a camera. He said, well, there it is. And I got back in the car and I was so relieved it had gone well. I was so proud, you know, I ran back home. And he said, well, unload the film. And I said, unload the film? What do you, what do you mean, unload the film? I spent that day full of pride and love and joy at my work, and, and I didn't have one piece of film in that camera. <laughs> But all of a sudden, color came along, and uh, it was uh, three and a quarter, 350, four, six three by five units. It's not the color of today either. I mean, we had color, but maybe it was green, maybe it was red, maybe it was blue. Sometimes it got all three together. The Stan Mertz camera evolves into the Model 10 camera. One of the biggest, I think, moves that the company ever made was going into prepay. Before that, it was everything was on spec. And we used to get just tons of mail back. Prepay really turned that company around. You know, I think that if we were still on the old spec basis today, there wouldn't be a life toucher in National School Studios. The company is outgrowing its facilities and so buys swamp land for $5,500 an acre, a 72,000 square foot plant on Picture Drive opens in September of 1968. March 30th of 72, and we get the word, Bruce and I, back home that LD has passed, passed on. That was tough, you know, it was a shock for everybody in the field because everybody just, everybody, 
focused on LD. LD Rothkip was the man for the company. He was the only one who could make it run at that time for no span of years. Not that we didn't like Bruce, but Bruce was not involved with the field at that point. And it was just a real shocker. Well, right away he had offers, you know, from outside people that morning. He said, those sons of beehives will never get close to this company. At least let the poor guy get his honor and his due. Bruce realized very quickly that he needed someone key to help him keep the sales organization going, and that's when he looked to the field and, and he found Dick Erickson and convinced him to come inside and, and help him keep the organization going. The company grows by increasing sales and by increasing capabilities through key acquisitions. Universal Publications joins NSS in 1973. Well, it was mostly black and white. Almost every book was pasted up. Um, coming from the high school market where I had been familiar with books, I was a little shocked when I first looked at the books, but it didn't take me long to realize that there was a lot of blood, sweat, toil, and tears put into those books. And one of the things that they didn't have in their program was senior pictures. So we were doing more of those senior pictures, and we had that, and consequently then we became the kind of the senior pictures, and the undergraduate we'd sent to National, and it worked out very, very well. We just grew like crazy, you know, for a long period of time. In 1977, the company hires a young executive from the accounting world. There was something special about the place. I, I you know, it was an esprit de corps, a feeling, a, the, the, the people really were like, this is really passion here. I mean, this is something that I haven't seen in business. By then, I, we were doing about $9 million in business at that time, and I, my, my dream was to get this company in the hands of the people who worked for it and help make it grow and prosper. Dick and I met at the airport that morning. We flew out to San Francisco for lunch. We interviewed with the firm, and we were back that night. And uh, that was the beginning of the ESOP. We were all invited out to the Sheridan Hotel for dinner, and uh, Mr. Reinecker made the announcement that he was giving the company to the employees. Well, absolute shock. The American people are the greatest giving people in the whole world. And uh, this, uh, and I just, uh, uh, just, decided, just decided to do my part. Technology and the introduction of the Micro Z camera helped the company grow. <laughs> the development of it was painful <laughs> because it, it was a device that really did not want to be born. And it was, um, there were several sort of revolutionary things on it that hadn't been done before. And then in 1983, National School Studios bought Kinder Photo International. Kinder Photo is the third largest child portrait photography business in the country. And with its addition, NSS nearly doubles in size. Retail is so different. Uh, what you have in the school business is a captive audience. But then what happens in the retail market, you're out trying to solicit each one of them. So it was very exciting. A lot of new people, a lot of people that moved from Reno or from Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, it, was, it was a very exciting time. Trying time, but exciting. And then um, in 1984, they changed the name to Life Touch. And uh, then, of course, it was supposed to be the big secret, but stuff started coming in boxes marked with the new name, and you know, so it was kind of getting out. Did you take this picture? Take it. Honey, I'm in it. She uh, is a good-looking fellow there, right in the second row. Uh, this picture was taken in 1986, the year the company turned 50. All of those people from all across the country, men and women, young and old, all of us photographers, and all of us doing the same thing day in, day out. What's that? Honey, we make magic happen. An important changing of the guard takes place at the executive level. More than 50 years after he founded the company, Bruce Reinecker dies in his sleep. The day before, he had been duck hunting with his friend Richard Erickson. I think it was a shock to an awful lot of people. And the people that I thought took it the hardest were the plant people. He had a special connection with the 
the people in the plant. He knew everybody's name back there. Life Touch, however, is in good hands, and in 1990 makes another important acquisition. Max Ward Delmar, a leading supplier of undergraduate and senior portraits, joins the company. Uh, it wasn't until after I came here that I that I saw the magic. I didn't, uh, you know, and I think that's true with, uh, and, and over my, my career I've had a chance to talk to a lot of people who have joined the company through the same way I did, through an acquisition process. Uh, and uh, it's a very similar, you know, you can't explain the life touch magic to somebody, you gotta experience it. Technology, still improving. The biggest advance in technology in the 90s, I would say, was, was life touch being able to see the digital in, uh, technology coming. United Church Directories joins the fold and becomes LifeTouch Church Directories. LifeTouch, I think, took the old company of United to a new plane in um, polishing it up and making it better. And it gave them that niche in family photography to give them that extra um, presence and an ability to, to work with families. Life Touch turns 60 and continues to evolve, improve, thrive, contribute to others, and innovate. Over the last five years, we've converted all of our production facilities over from film-based optical printing over to laser-based digital printing. Someone coming from Kinderphoto, where we used to have our own retail sites, and out in the, you know, in the malls, it's fun to have flashback where they're ours, we can do anything we want, and um, that's just such an incredible brand. As we've evolved now, we're taking that sales energy and that winning, winning attitude and making sure it's applied throughout the business into photography, uh, into our marketing efforts, certainly into our production capabilities. Life Touch gives back to the community by donating time, money, and hard work. We're not only successful in our business ventures, but we've got a lot of people that just care about, about people. And uh, whether it's our memory missions or uh, some of the things we're doing with the, with the inner city students, it's showing and demonstrating the heart of the company. Oh, look up here. I thought I'd lost this. Look at it. It's a picture of me with Paul Harnell, taken in 1992 the year I retired. Same year he was made president of Life Touch. Who's running the company now? Same guy, Paul. You know, in the 70 years since they were founded, Life Touch has had only four leaders. Is that odd? Very. Some companies have them. A revolving door in their executive office. Life Touch uses Velcro. Good one. All right, now. Uh, Oh, look at this. A memory book from 1963. That was the 25th anniversary of National School Studio.